Good morning and it's Tuesday morning, 17th of November and that's shaking because the dog is be between me and the table um, she's <laughs> getting her back scratched at the same time so I'm sorry about the wobbly camera but um, we need to get a, a steadier coffee table to put this on because <laughs> there's a bit of disruption going on here it's a bit like the weather outside a bit wild, a bit windy and a bit wet well not that's not Juma but you know what I mean it's a, a wild day, um, a bit of a stormy day and disruptive, but that's the man's family for you. We're always disruptive here, no matter how few of us might be in the house. It's maybe not a day for heading out and about too much, dog walking, of course. Um, but I did watch a flock of birds this morning who just seemed to me to be thoroughly enjoying feeling the wind beneath their wings and rising up and swooping and, and a, a group of them, a flock of them who are just seem to be playing, having that gorgeous time first thing in the morning where it was quiet and they just had the place to themselves and they were thoroughly enjoying the weather. Today for us, I don't know what you'll be doing, we'll probably all be waiting, some in Scotland with more trepidation than others hearing about whether or not they're being moved to Tier 4 and the new system. Um, tier 4 is the highest one, so that will make um, some inroads into what they are able to do and will impact on church things as much as anything else. So we're waiting at a little bit of trepidation. Of course, balancing the news of perhaps going up a tier with the news that hopeful of vaccines being produced and getting through all the tests and will be available not today or tomorrow but they're on their way and I think that's a really hopeful <clears throat> hopeful sign that we have um, and we know that you know this will pass and it seems to be taking an awful long time but it will pass and we'll find a way through this and it will all work out okay again not today not tomorrow as far as um, Covid is concerned and coronavirus is concerned, but we are getting there. And perhaps we're now at a stage where we can really look to our faith and, and find words of hope in there. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking particularly of that amazing verse, you know, as we're looking to think, you know, we've moved into tier three here and five people might be moving to tier four. But we've got the promise in the scriptures which says, God will wipe away every tear. Now, that will happen. <laughs> That's going to happen. Those tears will be a thing of the past and a thing that we look to eventually from you know, hindsight and see what happened and where we were and what our journeys were. It seems at the moment perhaps that there's no straight roads and there's no straight lines and there's not. We're wandering and we're going back and forward and all the rest of it. And, and that really brings me to, to think about Dalgetty Bay. Those of you who don't know the area, um, Dalgetty Bay is a big town, it's you know, 10,000, 12,000 people, um, it's a spread town but a lot of the streets, most of the streets, most of the roads are cul-de-sacs um, which makes them quite quiet in some ways. Um, it means that you, know, you go to visit someone, you go up, you turn the car and you go back again, the same route um, and for those of us dog walkers or even our walkers, we I tend to like a circular route so that I'm not coming back the way I went. I just like to keep going in the one direction. However, of course, when you have to stop and turn back and come the same way, you, you see things differently and you got a different perspective. So they're not dead ends, they're cul-de-sacs. There's places that you have to go and turn around and come back. That's if you're driving a car in the roads in Dalgetty Bay, or a motorised vehicle, perhaps I should say. But if you're walking, then you can go up some of these cul-de-sacs and discover that there are, are paths through into other cul-de-sacs, or into parks, or into access to the school or the library. When you explore the roads up, and don't just assume, I ah, can't go there, when you explore them, you find that there actually are ways through that are unexpected. Now, to find these, you need a really good map, perhaps, or you need somebody who's able to tell you, who will take you on that road or at least direct you on that road. If you don't and you're just out for a wander, um, then you've got to be prepared that sometimes you'll go up a road and, and there won't be a wee track through to the next street streets. 
and you'll have to come back the way you went up and you'll have to say good morning again perhaps to the people that you saw a minute before on the way up and thinking what's she doing that's a weird weird lady but we take those opportunities and chances and as we adventure and as we look we discover new things and new ways we discover where there are ways through and we discover where there's not ways through Anyone who doesn't know the Babe Adventures up St Combs Drive will think it's a, a cul-de-sac, a dead end. But it's not because you can cut through onto the avenue which takes you to Aberdour and the coastal path and the beach and St Bridget's. And it's a, a wonderland once you come through that little cycle gap. So we think we might be going in the wrong direction. And even if we are, we seem to have this idea that, you know, we can go off on the wrong track and we've been off on the wrong track, but we'll get back to the right one and it's okay and we can ignore that. That was just a wee aberration. We do that in our lives as well. We think, oh, maybe that that choice wasn't so good, but I've come back and I'm on the right track again. But the thing is, the places that we wander off to, even if we do have to come back the same way and rejoin the road we were on, that we journey of discovery is not wasted and it's not for nothing even if it's part of our careers our faith journey because there we will discover things we'll learn things and nothing is wasted God doesn't waste any part of our life so we learn and we absorb and we we find things that we would never have found before if we just Look around us, wherever we may be. Now, we don't deliberately, perhaps, go our, out of our way to get lost. But, as you know from past reflections, my ability to wander off and, and get a little bit lost are, are legend. You know, we've done that since I was a wee girl, because that's what my dad did. So, just follow in the, in the genetic material and continue to look around and see what's there. But we discover plants or birds or animals or just moments doesn't even have to be seeing something but perhaps we just find a moment where we realize God's presence or find a point where we look around and we can see things differently so cul-de-sacs and dead ends they're not bad news they are simply other parts of our journey that we use. And let's face it, in Dalgetty Bay, it's not the roads that come to a dead end that are important. And it's not the roads that don't lead anywhere that we have to think about. It's the people who live there that we visit. It's the people who live there that we know that makes that street important. So when we're looking around to see what's happening, don't think of dead ends. The vaccines. These researchers haven't just gone into the lab one morning and said, this is what we're going to do and this is how it's going to work. And hey, presto, everything's fine. Science is not like that either. Science is trial and error. Science is trying to progress things and then learn from that and perhaps do something differently. And the vaccines that are coming through now have, are the product of, of many cul-de-sacs, I'm sure. And many things that have not quite worked. But in the process of not working, there is learning to be had. And we need that. Because perhaps it will then help us to understand more about the world around us. And perhaps more about the other people with whom we travel, who have been on those journeys too. But now we can perhaps empathise with them. Sometimes it's not just finding the, the one path through that we can get from A to B the quickest. Sometimes it's not the destination, it's also the journey. And we need to make sure that our journeys are made with our eyes open, our ears open, our spirits open to see and experience and yet yeah, to learn and enjoy the life that we live. So, he will wipe away every tear eventually. We'll be back to normality. But let's take with us all the lessons that we are still learning from this enforced isolation, enforced lockdown, enforced whatever. 
there's much that we can still get from life and faith and one another. So let's enjoy the journey together. Let us pray. Lord, help us to not fret or mither about our way through life. To not look back and wonder why we were there or then but to consider all that we have learned, all that we have seen and heard and experienced that helps us in our lives today, helps us to help others today with increased understanding and empathy, a deeper awareness of need, but also of how that need can be met. We give thanks for all our pasts, all the past that has shaped us, for the people we've met, worked with, socialised with, for the friends, the family with whom we have shared our journey and theirs, for the wise and the caring, the difficult and disturbing, the one who shows us how to do things better and the ones who show us how not to live or treat others. Lord, give us wisdom to learn. We give thanks for the journey and pray that no matter where each day leads, we will look around us to watch the birds fly, the children play, that we will smile as we chat to friends on the phone or on the doorstep, that we will share our hopes and concerns so that our travelling will draw us closer together. And we pray today for hospitals for care homes, for all staff being stretched, wards filling and full, for the ancillary staff, for everyone who is on that front line, professional and volunteer, who are giving their all and are struggling. We pray too for the scientists the lab workers, giving thanks for all their expertise and dedication, for the testing and researching and for keeping to their remit and helping us to have hope. Lord, give us patience that we will wait with hope. And God, today we pray for all for whom the stormy weather around us is the least of their problems those who have physical, emotional, psychological storms going on in and around them, who are battered and bruised, may they know that you are with them and hold them always, that you will lead them forward from this place and you will help them. God, we give you this day and all it will hold, all the conversations, all the work, all the rest, all the play, knowing that whatever we experience with you will help us to learn to be more like you and to build your kingdom, to make your world, your creation, all that it needs to be and should be and can be. We come in Jesus' name, our Lord, our Saviour, the one who came through the storm to meet with his disciples and to meet with us. Lord, may we place our hand in his and know that we are safe. We pray in your name and we pray in your love. Amen. Beginning to look towards Advent and that time of waiting and beginning to wonder what it is that we can put in place to make our community, our church, our family, our homes bright and light and colourful and hope-filled. So that's where my mind is starting to go. Well, occasionally my mind goes somewhere and that's where it's starting to go. Whatever you're doing today, enjoy it and God bless.